Latifa from the U.S. She says, my family are on some form of shirk, innovation, believing in uh, superstitions. And Suhail's question is almost the same about an advice to the parents how to, and, the, and relatives who are doing wrong things, how to deal with them. First of all, put yourself in their shoes. The size is going to be much bigger, but yeah, any, hypothetically. Put yourself in their place. Meaning, if you were to be advised by a minor, a young son or a member of the family who is no one, who has just grown up after being a child, would you take their advice um, positively and accept it? People differ. And this is why we, in the beginning, tend to be a bit aggressive. I used to be like this. I can hear people saying, oh, Sheikh, you're still aggressive. No, I'm not. I was way aggressive. In the sense that when I started practicing almost 40 years ago, and everybody around me in the family, in the neighborhood, were not practicing at all. If they pray, that's good. But everything was totally westernized in my family. And when I started practicing, I started looking at things as the moral police, as the religious police. This is bad. This is wrong. Put your seatbelt on. You don't have a driving license. What are you doing? What? So all what I used to do is correct people. And this is the worst type of da'wah. When you just sit and criticize. Put yourself in your house with your wife. If you only criticize her cooking, the way she cleans, the way she irons the clothes, the way she speaks or looks, you're not a good person, let alone that she would file for divorce yesterday. This is not the way. You have to encourage. You have to make people love you. So in the beginning, it was very rough. But a couple of years later, when one started to gain more knowledge, to know and learn how the Prophet used to behave, alayhi salatu was salam, what is the meaning of the different verses of the Quran describing the way of the Prophet in da'wah and how kind and tolerant he was, alayhi salatu was salam. Once you really fill yourself up with the sunnah of the Prophet, alayhi salam, then you know how to prioritize when to speak and when to refrain, when to compliment and when to criticize, when to maybe live with them for a couple of months or more without talking about Islam at all. Some people are so sensitive because of our wrongdoings. The moment you say, oh, subhanallah, they are offensive to us. Why? You said, subhanallah, now you're going to lecture me. Now you're going to tell, tell me that I'm, 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 I'm heading to hell. I didn't say that. I just said, subhanallah. They're sensitive because of my continuous way of trying to persuade them to do this or that. Now, if I try to change by being me, being kind, being helpful. Do you want me to take you to, to the mall? Okay, come sis, I'll take you to, ma to the mall. Oh, my brother is taking me to the mall. He never done such a thing. I never speak to her about anything about Islam. For a couple of months, showing them that I'm a different person, making them love me against their will. Once they love me, they trust me, and they think of me the world, then I try to slowly show them evidences from the Quran and the Sunnah. And why do I emphasize on the Quran and the Sunnah? Because those who are in shirk or innovation or believe in superstitions, usually if you just tell them, well, Sheikh bin Baz says so-and-so, or Ibn Uthameen says so-and-so, or the scholar or that scholar, they are on their toes. And, and, and they're like a cat that uh, uh, arc, arches her, her back ready to attack. Why? Because the names you mentioned go totally against their beliefs and what their
peers and shiuch and scholars believe. So don't do that. Learn where Sheikh bin Baz and bin Uthameen and the great scholars of Islam took that knowledge from, from the Quran and the Sunnah. And whenever you speak to them, this is what Allah says. So if they start bite biting, you say, Allah says, وَلَا يَغْتَبْ بَعْضُكُمْ بَعْضًا And one should not backbite others. It's in the Quran. Oh, I didn't bring anything from me. Yeah, yeah, we're not backbiting them. We're telling the truth. Okay, show them the hadith in the Sahih. The Prophet said, backbiting is mentioning your brother with something that he hates, which is in him, which is true. But he's not present. So now you've cornered them. And you don't do this on regular basis like 24-7. You select the times. Sometimes, yeah, I should do and speak. Sometimes I shouldn't. People who do not pray on time or who commit shirk or who do heinous things, you don't go to them and say, uh, excuse me, you know that it's from the sunnah to trim your fingernails. What is this? Fingernails come at the bottom of the list of your priorities. Focus on tawheed, focus on prayer, focus on avoiding uh, innovation, but you have to do it tactically and Allah knows best.